What's up, everybody? Ben Raza and Matt Gajewski here for awesomeo.com, and we are back with another college football betting preview. We got two conferences to break down, so we're going to be going lightning speed today. We're going Pac-12 and Big 12. A lot of teams to get to, some national championship contenders, uh, starting with Oklahoma, who we'll get to in a second, Matt. Are you excited? I know these aren't your favorite conferences, but we still got a lot to talk about. Oh, there's still a lot to love in these conferences. You know, the Pac-12, I think, will be up a little bit from past years. They haven't made the playoffs since that Washington playoff berth. I believe it was in 2016. I may be wrong on that. But they only have two playoff appearances. I think they'll be better this year. The Big 12 has a very, very good team in Oklahoma that I'm excited to talk about, too. We talked about this on Betting You, and if you guys haven't checked that out, our podcast, Breaking Down These Conferences in Depth, is live. It's on all Apple, Spotify, all the places you can get podcasts. Betting You, it's brand new. Go check that out. And certainly, if you are here on the Awesome Odds channel, that is brand new. Hit that like and subscribe button. We are building this channel fast and furious. Very, very excited to have you guys along for the ride. But I don't know. I was going to say we're going to definitely start with the Big 12. We still are, but I don't know why I lean there. I want to talk about Oklahoma. They are my pick to win the national championship this year. I think they have everything that you could want. Their win total sits at 11. So if they go undefeated, you cash. If they lose one game, you push. To me, uh, at worst, you're getting a push. This schedule is beautiful. Minus 170 to win the conference. I know I'm rattling off a lot of things here, Matt. I like the over on all things Oklahoma. I am buying across the board with the Sooners. Yeah, you just have a lot of options with the Sooners. And I think at this point, I would rather take something like Oklahoma and their win total at minus 110. I do think they probably need to go undefeated at the very least have one loss to win this conference. And then you're just getting better odds on them with their win total rather than to win the conference. Basically, with Oklahoma, you're looking at minus around 170, minus 180 to win the Big 12. But then their win total at 11 at minus 110 I think they need to win at least 11 games anyway to cash both of those bets. So I'd rather just take the better odds. Agree. Uh, And looking at their schedule real quick, they've got everything that I want. They get Iowa State at home. They go to Oklahoma State. I don't think that will be this last game of the year that big of a challenge. They always get Texas, you know, in the neutral site. Schedule's doable, manageable. Non-conference is a non-issue. Got a quarterback stability, ton of weapons. What's not to like? Really, I think... Everything is setting up for Oklahoma this year. You mentioned their schedule, their non-conference, super easy. Their away games are at Kansas State, Kansas, Baylor, Oklahoma State, and then they'll play Texas at a neutral location that is in Dallas. So maybe you give a little bit of home field advantage to Texas. But then they draw their other tough opponents at home, TCU, West Virginia, Iowa State. You like that schedule a ton. You love what they're bringing back. I mean, Spencer Rattler, Heisman favorite, favorite for the number one overall pick. You have two stud running backs, Tennessee transfer Eric Gray. You have Kennedy Brooks returning from his opt-out. You also have stud receivers, Marvin Mims entering his second season. They're returning a ton at that position. And then on defense, they have six all-conference players and probably the strongest defense we've seen Oklahoma in recent memory. That's what's held them back several years. They're not going to just be a sieve. They will be able to stop some people this year. But let's move on from them. Like I said, I think we both really like them to win the conference, and I think they're going to go undefeated. Is there another team in the Big 12 that you're either shorting or a team that you say, you know what, they might not win the conference, but they can still push over their win total? A team I like over the win total is Texas. They're changing coaching staffs now. They'll have Steve Sarkeesian coming in. But this team was actually really good last year. They were 5-3. and They lost to TCU, Oklahoma, and Iowa State. They lost to TCU by two points, Oklahoma by eight points, in Iowa State by three, and this could have looked very different. If you remember the TCU game, they fumbled at the goal line. Their game against Oklahoma required four overtimes. And then against Iowa State, they were leading until about a minute and a half left in the game, and then they missed the game-tying field goal. Texas could have been undefeated last year. Now, this year, they're losing their quarterback, Sam Ellinger, but they are getting Casey Thompson, Hudson Card. They're both four stars. It's going to be a QB battle there. Bajan Robinson is back. The offensive line is strong. They have nine of their top 10 in that unit coming back. And then on defense, I don't think they'll be as strong as a team like Oklahoma, but it's definitely not a weakness either. I don't mind them. Certainly they can afford to drop a game against a team like Oklahoma. If they steal that, they're going to push over their win total. comes down to QB stability. Ellinger was a do-everything dual threat. These guys have pedigree. Bijan Robinson, they should just give him the ball 20 times because when you average like 10 yards a carry, good things happen. I like Texas. I think they are distinctly behind 
Oklahoma, and I think you think that too, and that's not pertinent to the win total per se. Uh, it's just right now I see a clear one and then everybody else in this conference. Yeah, I agree 100%. And that's why I still like this. You can get it at seven and a half. So you drop the game to Oklahoma and you can even drop a game to like an Iowa State and still cash this win total. Oh, you have plenty of room. If you take care of the bottom half of this, you know, Big 12 conference and there's some easy wins uh, there, Texas will be just fine and they'll be going to a bowl game and probably cashing this win total. So they can definitely coexist. You did mention, and I'm not going to push back too much. That's what betting you is for, for my egregious take. Spencer Rattler, Heisman favorite, certainly among them. I'm going to the Pac-12. First thing I'm going to get is Keaton Slovis, my man, quarterback at USC. Don't sleep on him and don't sleep on the Trojans here. They're a team that I do like. They're eight and a half win total. You can get plus money if you want to get aggressive and go over there, plus 105. And I think they absolutely can do that. They've got the firepower with Slovis, of course, and he's got weapons on the outside. Defense is eh, but I think they can hold up. And the conference really doesn't have an Oklahoma to me. It's a wide open. They have a fantastic schedule. You know, it's split amongst two divisions. They don't draw Oregon and Washington. So everything for USC sets up. I do want to ask you about their win total and also their number of plus 400 to win the conference championship out in the Pac-12. Yeah, I love both. I think they're the favorite to make the Pac-12 championship from their side. So then you're probably looking at a game against Washington or Oregon in that title game. But Oregon and Washington are going to cannibalize each other a little bit. So I'd rather take what I think is a more surefire bet in USC at plus 400 to win the conference. We know the first step is making that conference game. So if they can get there, I love this bet a lot. Their win total You can get this at plus money, plus 105 for eight and a half, which I think is the best bet in the Pac-12. You mentioned their schedule, dodging those two opponents in Oregon, Washington. Love that. They play Notre Dame in non-conference. Fortunately, Notre Dame will be a little bit down this year compared to what we've seen in recent seasons. So I think they can even win that game and push over this eight and a half win total. Yeah, their non-conference at worst, they're going to be two and one, and it makes the margin a little thinner. Uh, Easily could be three and oh, so... Uh, They have everything. Listen, the talent is there. I think there are weapons on the outside that will step up on the DFS side. I know we're going to be talking plenty USC football uh, with the way that they throw it, but it's such a weird conference. You see a lot of teams and we're going to talk about this on the podcast more between six, eight and a half, nine. win. You don't see that 11 win total from Oregon or Washington and rightfully so. So is there another team, whether it's Arizona State, Washington State, UCLA, any of these teams that could make a leap and and surprise some people? A team I'm looking to short a little bit here is UCLA. We've talked about UCLA a lot in the past, and I actually like their roster a little bit, but they have a very difficult schedule. They're going to face LSU in non-conference play. The teams they dodge within their conference are Washington State, Oregon State. Those are two of the worst teams in the conference. So you're playing all of the good teams, your Arizona States, USC's, Washington, Oregon, Utah's, they get them all. And then you look at their roster makeup. They they don't have the best defense in the conference for sure. They return only two all-conference players, both of whom were just honorable mention. Their offensive line did struggle at times last year. They ranked 50th in pass blocking. Only their center returns all-conference honors. He was just an honorable mention there. Their quarterback, Dorian Thompson Robinson, has struggled at points in his career. They don't really have that stud receiver you look to after they lost Demetric Felton, who kind of split time between running back and receiver. They're losing a lot. I'm not sure what they're bringing back. So this is a team I'll be looking to push under on. Yeah, a lot of questions there. I'm not the biggest Chip Kelly guy. They do get an A&M transfer who will be in uh, for the receivers. That could help a little bit. But overall, it's just not a team. You know, and the schedule tells the tale. There are no, they get Fresno State at home and they should win that game. They get Hawaii and they should win. But there are no, oh, they play, you know, directional Northwest State Tech where it's just a made-up school and you start 1-0 and automatically. It's a very difficult Pac-12 schedule. As you mentioned, the teams that they dodge are teams you wouldn't want to dodge. Those are the easy cupcake games. So I don't really like them. I don't think there'll be a factor. I would rather look to you know the Arizona States or even, honestly, not that I like Utah, but someone like that over UCLA this year. I'm with you uh, on that win total. These are going to be very interesting conferences. The last thing I want to ask you before we duck on out of here, do you see any chance that a Pac-12 team is in the playoff? I think the best chance is USC. I do think they would need to be undefeated. I think even as long as there isn't chaos in the other conferences, a one loss USC or a one loss, you name the team, Washington, Oregon, 
I think they're probably on the outside looking in unless there's some chaos in a different conference and you have like a one loss SEC championship team or something like that. I would agree. I'll say real quickly, I think that Oregon, if they lose a close game to Ohio State in particular, who they get on the road, if they mop up everybody else, that's a pretty good case because that could be a fantastic loss. But other than that, going to be very, very difficult. But you know what? You got a couple bets here, starting with Oklahoma and Texas and finishing up with USC and maybe shorting some UCLA this year. So on that note, we're going to bounce on out of here, but stay tuned. The season is only a couple weeks away. I know I can speak for Matt on this one. We cannot wait. We're going to have you covered for every single slate, whether it's Saturday, Maction, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We don't care what day of the week. Stay tuned for Awesome All Odds because we're going to be bringing you all that content all year long. So good luck, everyone. Enjoy the videos. Hit that like button on your way out, and we'll talk to you guys soon.